Pogo Stuck Rage With Your Friends. If you have heard of it, you've probably watched your favorite content creator raging at its brutal difficulty. Or alternatively, you may have watched them use every last ounce of their patience to beat it. Except that's only after 50 plus hours of arduous gameplay. But what if I told you that this 50 plus hour challenge could be completed in just mere minutes? Well, to a small and very dedicated community of speedrunners, this niche $7 Steam game is a walk in the park. Today, we're going to take a look at this game's greatest players who push the world record battles to utter milliseconds. Ladies and gentlemen, this is the history of Pokestuck's world record speedruns. Pogostuck was released to Steam on February 28th, 2019. With getting over it as an inspiration, this game set out to challenge gamers on their reaction times, precision platforming, and most important of all, patience. The game is simple at a glance, but it's actually incredibly unique. Let me tell you the basic controls and mechanics. First, the spacebar is your jump button, and A and D rotate your character. Jumping with a 270 degree flip earns you a boost which allows you to jump higher in the air. If you touch any surface without landing Pogostuck down, your character will bonk and you will get knocked back. Simple, right? Well, there's a catch. Even if you don't give the game any inputs, your character will still bounce and move freely on its own, leaving the player with little time to think and react in between jumps. The difficulty this control scheme offers combined with clever map design gives this game a reputation as a rite of passage for streamers and gamers. Not only is it a prestigious challenge to complete, but it's also a rage game inhibiting great reactions of what? anger and accomplishment. In its purest form, it's easily one of the most satisfying and heart-racing speedrun games of all time. So let's take a deep dive into all the legendary speedrun tales of this game's four years in existence. So what a better way to start other than the first ever completion. When Pogostuck was released, there was only one map. It's honestly hard to imagine what playing the iconic map 1 would be like completely blind, but this was the reality for early players. In just four days after Pogostuck's release, we had our first ever player to summit the level. On March 3rd, 2019, American player CS Fuser hit the final Voltro jump and cemented himself in what would be a long history book. I am a legend. <laughs> CS Fuser was rewarded with his own congratulations in the main menu of only his game from Supercoop, the developer of Pogostuck. With CS Fuser leading the way, many more players started completing the game and following in his footsteps. Have you ever beaten a game and enjoyed it so much that you thought, well, what if I did it again, but faster? Well, whether the answer is yes or no, Pogostuck does something very clever to spark that question into players' minds. The developer of the game, Supercoo, programmed a live in-game leaderboard to show who has the fastest completion time in the world. It appears at different heights in the climb and always gets a glance from the passing Pogoers. Gone were the days where you had to submit runs to speedrun.com and wait for some grimy moderator to approve it. As soon as you hit that new PB, it's instantly on display to everyone playing in-game. This constant reminder of who's the fastest player was a genius inclusion that enticed players to ask themselves, what if my name could be on that list? Let's talk about the design of Map 1. Map 1 is a map that starts out horizontally and then snakes back and forth vertically until the finish line. The route goes from fruits, to bone pit, to wind cliffs, to twin trees, to grapes, to tree, to pineapples, to cherries, to palm tree, to Maui heads, down then up into mushrooms, through the mushroom cave to the wall jumps, across the pillars, up the lava chute, across the anvil jump into flowers, then cliff jumps into ice, up to coal mine, and then back down to vulture, through the teeth, into egg section, where you finally get up to the finish line. On paper, it looks very simple, but in practice, not so much. The original pioneers of Pogostuck were CS Fuser and Schlomdog. These two players dominated the world record early on and are responsible for labbing out many early skips. In the game's first month of release, they were aiming for a sub four minute time. Schlomdog is remembered to be on top of the game's earliest leaderboards with many rapid improvements to the world record. In Pokestock's earliest speedruns, we can see Fuser here with a sub five minute time. Then we see Schlomdog hit the game's first ever sub four minute time with a 356, which at the time was 30 seconds faster than the previous world record. Then, Fuser took the world record back with a 354. Schlomdog and Fuser were the ones pushing the speedrun of Pogostuck forward, until another player tried his luck for the world record. With any new speedrun category, there tends to be a lot of scrappy runs fighting for the top spot until someone pushes the game to its limits. In the Map 1 era, there was only one man who stands out as the absolute great. His name was Jedi Jake. 
Jedi Jake was one of the earliest players speedrunning Pokestuck. By this point, at sub 4 minutes, the main players scrapping for the top spot other than CS Fuser and Schlomdog were Valmerix, Sleeping, Izumi, Seacomerer, Matakin, and Jedi Jake. Throughout the rapid improvement to the world record, Jake was always sitting around the number 10 spot on the leaderboard. However, through his persistence, Jake would take the next world record at a 351. From here on out, Jake always seemed to be the one player to most consistently set new times. To give you a perspective of just how insanely dominant this guy became, he once tried to cover the entire in-game leaderboard with just his alt accounts. In fact, he bought Pogostuck 16 times to make his name take up 16 spots in the top 30. With the game price at $6.99, that's roughly $112 US dollars spent just on alt accounts. Obviously, Superku disapproved of this, so he wiped all his alt accounts from the leaderboard. Early on, while the times rapidly got pushed closer and closer to sub-4 minutes, the top runners were collaborating. There was a lot of experimenting going on to make improvements to the world record. And as a result, a couple major skips were discovered that went on to define the map 1 speedrun. The first is Palm Tree Skip, discovered by CS Fuser and Schlomdog. This skip is a staple of the run, allowing players to completely skip the Palm Tree section, which happened to previously be the most tedious segment of the run. Palm Tree section had the player navigating the trunk of palm trees, which has a lot of harsh angles and corners. To avoid the section altogether, you can jump off this cherry with a boost to go back down and then up into the mushroom section. This skip was later enhanced by Sleeping, who accidentally discovered that the setup could be done in one jump without disrupting the flow of the run. The next skip is called Anvil Skip, and it is still the most iconic skip in Pokestuck due to the controversy that surrounded it. The skip was discovered by the developer Superku. It involves bouncing off this mushroom two times, landing on the first cave mushroom, jumping back to the left with the risk of going too far and falling off the cliff, landing on the leftmost mushroom, jumping back up above this upside down mushroom to this slope which is too steep to ascend, and flipping back to the underside of the upside down mushroom which boosts you up on top of these cliffs. From here, you can get all the way to flower section without having to go through the pillars, lava, and anvil section of the map. This skip can be extra difficult because these mushrooms can be finicky to work with, so there is major precision involved in nailing this trick. However, Superku had a major discomfort with anvil skip. He believed it glossed over too much of the map he designed. He thought about removing the skip and turned to the community's top runners to help him decide. However, after he asked players like Val Merix, Jedi Jake, CS Fuser, and Schlomdog about it, there was a large discourse about the topic. Eventually, they opted to leave the skip in the game, eager to use it in their speedruns. They literally had already started incorporating Anvil Skip into their attempts. After leaving it be, Supercrew regrets not removing it from the game to this day, so much so that he vowed to listen to his game dev gut for all later tough decisions. The last skip we're going to talk about is Egg Skip. Discovered by Schlomdog, this skip involves some tech known as Tilt Jumps or Egg Jumps. The tech involves the player landing at a shallow angle and rotating their character back to straight in the short window of a full jump input. This technique gains the player a slight height increase with every jump by tricking the game into thinking you're falling farther by landing sideways and thus adding height on the next boost. It allows players to avoid bouncing the egg at the end of the map up the hill and as a result save a ton of time. It's normally done in 5 or 6 egg jumps, but it was later discovered that it could be done in 4. So with these 3 optimizations in play, Jedi Jake went to work. He stayed a dominant figure, constantly improving and reclaiming world record times in the 3 minute range. Jake's success was rooted in his ability to hit Anvil Skip. The skip had such a monumental impact on the speedrun, and Jake using the work of Schlomdog and Fuser's optimizations became incredibly consistent at it. On Jake's YouTube channel, there are old world records showing Jake optimizing the world record from 340 to 335 to 331. We can see Jake wearing a golden crown in these runs. Supercrew invented this crown for all winners who were able to beat the map, and later changed the crown to display a separate color for the world record holder to wear in-game and flex their dominance. This would become a tradition, with a new crown cosmetic being added for each future map. We can see here that Jake's next world record PB at 3.23 is 12 seconds faster than the second place run at 3.35. In his next world record speedrun video, he starts out with a Star Wars inspired intro headed by the title, The Quest for Perfection. And then, on August 28th, 2019, Jake did this.
the run was exceptionally clean, featuring a first try palm tree and anvil skip. Where Jake lost a lot of time was cliff jumps, ice section, and coal, where a lot of extra jumps were being taken. He was only minus three seconds in the green when entering egg section, but an impressive five jump egg skip allowed Jake to set a time seven seconds faster than his own previous world record. It was also a whopping 19 seconds faster than the next best run. It was an unreal achievement that went unmatched for a whole five months. At this point, Jake was satisfied and when left with no threat of competition, he took a long break from the game with his name atop the leaderboard. Whilst Jake was on break, Pokestuck's monthly average concurrent player base was at an all-time low. In September 2019, there was an average of just 8.3 concurrent players, and in October, an average of 11.7 concurrent players. Jake's dominant record had halted any challengers, and the game was in distress. But thankfully, the numbers would never fall this low ever again. Supercrew released a major content update on November 12, 2019 that introduced an influx of players into the game. It was the Loot Mode update. Loot Mode is a game mode that features a Pokemon entering a cave in Map 1 and finding a dungeon with lots of treasure. The game mode itself was essentially a roguelike using the Pokestuck controls. There was treasure, enemies, power-ups, chests, health items. It was an entirely new way to play the game of Pogostuck. There is one section of the community who used Loot Mode to become insanely good at Pogostuck. I'm talking, of course, about the Japanese community. To this day, the Loot Mode leaderboards are heavily dominated by the Japanese community. Famous players like Matana, Matakin, and Azumi all dominated early loot mode, but they didn't stop there. At the turn of the new year, Jedi Jake's 316 time was under heavy threat, and sometime in late January 2020, Jedi Jake's five-month reign atop the leaderboard came to an end. Matakin had surpassed Jake's 316 with a 314 time. Jake being on break was not around this time to reclaim it. And so, Matakin went on a lengthy spell atop the leaderboard. In this time, Jake's 316 time was also beaten by Izumi with a 315 341, and then again by Sleeping with a 315 896, meaning Jake had dropped to fourth place on the leaderboard. But Jake's quest for perfection would not end here. In April of 2020, Jake picked Pokestuck back up and began to grind. Live streaming his speedruns, he was etching closer and closer to being back in top four. And just like that, on May 3rd, 2020, just four months after Matakin's world record, Jake would hit a run that would re-cement himself as the best in the world. It was another incredible run, only plagued by minor bonks and unoptimized movement. He hit a first try palm tree skip, but bonked when transitioning to anvil skip. The anvil skip was first try, but he took a big full hop when trying to ascend into flowers. He completed the run with a six jump egg skip that was just enough to reinstate himself as the world record holder, with a 3.12.091. It was just something we all knew was inevitable. Jake was simply the best player in the world, but little did we know that just a month later, everything was about to change. Is this the start or the end, oh caterpillar? On June 2nd, 2020, a trailer was uploaded to YouTube by Supercoo for what was to become Pogostuck Map 2, the monolith of perseverance, with a release date scheduled for June 26, 2020. In the Steam article announcing this trailer, Supercoo announced that this would be the finale to Pogostuck. Although Supercoo had teased the sequel map to Twitch streamer Mizkif, this trailer made it official. This was a massive excitement for the community, especially for those who arrived late to the speedrunning party. 
It was a brand new map to grind and potentially fight for a more reachable world record time than the current leaderboard. However, Jedi Jake wasn't ready to leave map 1 behind. His quest for perfection wasn't over. With map 2 being announced, speedrunners were hopping back into map 1 aiming to grind in preparation for map 2. Jake would once again be beaten by Matakeen with a 311 and sleeping with a 310 leading up to map 2's release. With all these pieces set in stone, on June 9th, 2020, Jake nailed this amazing run. It was first try palm tree skip, first try anvil skip, no bonks, and perfect jump executions. At this moment in time, it was the perfect run. Well, until egg skip. As we know, with perfect max tilted egg jumps, the skip could be done in four jumps. Jake, knowing how hard it was to do in four jumps, had been doing it in five jumps, but this time, he barely got enough height on jump five, forcing him to jump back down and then up again before finishing. His quest for perfection ended with a near flawless run by his standards, earning him a 309 727. Nonetheless, it was the best run the world had ever seen. In the eyes of the community, it was still seen as flawless and untouchable. This would be Jedi Jake's final map one world record, and to this day, his final map one personal best. On June 26, 2020, Pokestuck was about to massively change. You see, Pokestuck was always around on YouTube and Twitch from the very beginning, with the likes of Dan TDM, Markiplier, Funhouse, and Achievement Hunter all taking a crack at it shortly after its release. But there were two smaller creators who became fans early on in its lifespan that really influenced the masses to try it. Their names are Ludwig and Miskiff. In the lead-up to Map 2's release, their channels had boomed in size due to innovative content and increased viewership on Twitch from the global pandemic. Their influence after Map 2's release, along with many other creators including XQC and again Markiplier, put millions of eyes on the game. It was easy to watch these guys play Map 2 and make fun of them, but it always begs the question, how hard can it be? Pogostuck's average player base nearly quadrupled in size after the release of Map 2, and as many creators quit, Ludwig was the one creator to persevere, creating one of the most memorable sequences of Twitch history. Let's look at the breakdown of map 2. The map itself is an entirely vertical chute that snakes back and forth slightly from wall to wall. Right out of the starting area, you climb up to ants, then to coconuts, then to clovers, then flower wall, then chestnuts, then wind, then bees, then vines, then pillars and cogs, then axe, then dragon jumps across to the duck, then lilies to gravity orbs, then snake jumps to wall jumps, and then the final stretch goes through blocks, where the finish line awaits at a thousand meters. When it comes to the speedrunning of map 2, the map proved to be a massive challenge even for some of the game's best players. Players like Jedi Jake, Valmerix, and Dan Corona took over 4 hours to summit the climb. But the first player to beat map 2 was someone that nobody could have ever anticipated. It was a Japanese player named Tom who completed it in just 1 hour, 18 minutes, and 41 seconds. But more notably, the second player ever to beat map 2 was another new Japanese player by the name of Rain SP. Based on the difficulty we were facing with the second map's blind playthrough, these first completions were mind-blowing. From what I can remember, these players were not even in map 1's top 10. Who were they and why were they so good? Could it have been loot mode? We will never know, but many players began to follow in their footsteps completing the map on launch day. The top 5 completionists consisted of 4 Japanese runners and 1 British man named Val Merix. The map 2 world record was a scrappy one for quite some time. On release day, we could see Matana sit on top of the leaderboard with a 7 minute 47 second time, with just 8 people in the world having completed the map. Just 3 days after release on June 29th, Dan Cronin is seen here on a run while Matakeen, Rain SP, and Val Merrick sit atop the leaderboard. This run would result in a 647, making Dan Corona second in the world. But on the 4th of July, one American man was about to leave his mark on the leaderboard, Dan Corona. Setting his first ever world record, the content creator beat his PB by 53 seconds and jumped from the 11th spot all the way to the world record. That clip with my parents entering the room behind me actually ended up being semi-viral in LSF, making it into the Twitch recap for 2020. What an achievement! What a run! And then I lost it in 3 hours. Yeah. This is how competitive the leaderboard became at the release of Map 2. To become a part of moments like that in the future, consider heading over to my Twitch page and dropping a follow. 
In the first month after the release of Map 2, the world record bounced around a ton, with players like Yuzume, Milicha, and Matana creating names for themselves on the leaderboard. Though no matter who had the world record, Rain SP always seemed to reclaim it. On July 11th, 2020, a familiar face stepped up to the challenge. Jedi Jake was back and grinding Map 2. He may have had a late start to the grind, but if there was one man that was going to overtake the momentum of Rain, he was going to do it. The run was sloppy, there's no denying it. But this is the first ever recorded run we see skips being used at the top level. I say skips, but Map 2 is a very linear map. Most skips we talk about are actually only skipping a few small segments of jumps at a time. And no, we're not going to talk about OG Rona skip, that was killed on launch day. The first of these improvements we're going to talk about is Ant Skip, discovered by Crumpet. At the very beginning of the run, instead of heading right, you can actually flip back to the left on this wall and skip the first few jumps of Ant Section. It's an incredibly lucrative skip that is easy to go for since it's at the very start and it's not that difficult to pull off. Superku has revealed that this was intentional and he knew about this small skip. The next skip is B Skip. Everyone struggles with the transition from bees to vines, having to jump on moving platforms and then wall jump around these thorns. But with this skip, if you jump off the bee and up the wall and take three wall jumps before flipping back down in line with these thorns, you will land on the next bee exiting the wall and will be able to jump up to these mushrooms, skipping the rest of the wall jumps in the entrance to vines section. And for Jake, this was just another day in the office. He finished with a 452, 166, and narrowly etched the head of Reigns 452, 490. World record! Let's Go, I think. It was just another monumental run from Jedi Jake. However, contenders for the world record had an increasingly dangerous foe to face. The reign of rain was about to ensue. On July 25th, 2020, we see rain back on top with a 429 on the leaderboard. It was 18 seconds faster than second place. He didn't stop at map two either. He took the world record on every single leaderboard in the game. Remember Jedi Jake's 309 map one world record? Well, Rain became the first ever player to achieve a sub three minute time on map one. That's right, a 2.58 map one time. This was a monumental run that lasted as the world record for a very long time. Sub three minutes on map one was a mind blowing world record, especially for a player who no one knew about before map two's release. It was a time that for a while was largely considered impossible by some of Map 1's earliest top players. Rain was a scarily fast player who rose to dominance almost overnight. A new goat had appeared to dominate the crown. With the summer coming to a close and Rain on top of the Map 2 leaderboard with a 4 minute 27 second time, Pogostuck was now a widely known game on Twitch. So much so that streamer Charles Got Sauce decided to try and host a competitive tournament due to the large amount of competition in the speedrunning scene. It was to be a Map 1 skipless tournament and was going to be commentated by him and Jedi Jake. It didn't have a ton of blockbuster names, but a lot of upcoming runners took their shot at winning the first ever Pogostuff tournament. One of those names was an American kid by the name of Plant. Plant was already making waves on the leaderboards, but this tournament really put his name on the map. Now, Valmerix was the easy favorite to win, being the only OG top player in the bracket, but on the other half, Plant was tearing up the competition. On September 24th, 2020, when it reached the finals, it was all but inevitable that we were about to see Valmeric's consistency versus Plant's gusto. In a dramatic finish, Valmeric was able to close out the victory by just a four second difference, earning himself a trophy in his main menu screen. However, this did not discourage Plant. In fact, this bout with Valmeric only reassured Plant that he could compete among the best of the best. So when it came to map two, Plant showed the world just how good he was. He didn't just get world record, he absolutely crushed Reigns 427 by 14 seconds. A 413-172. This sparked what is known as the greatest rivalry to ever exist in Pogostuck's entire history. You see, there was always a separation in the community up until this point. With the obvious language barrier, the English-speaking Pogostuck community and the Japanese Pogostuck community had never really interacted before. But in mid-October, this was about to change. With help from Izumi, an original Map 1 speedrunner, Jedi Jake was organizing a Pokestop tournament with the goal of seeing the game's greatest players race to the finish. He wanted to vastly improve upon the groundwork that the first tournament laid out. He wanted all the best players from all over the world to compete, linking the Japanese community with the American and European community. This sparked the creation of the tournament series known as the Pogo Jedi Open. On October 17th, 2020, we got to see the world's best speedrunners compete in a Map 1 regular tournament. It was a pretty stacked lineup. But everyone watching had their eyes on the bottom half of the bracket, Plant vs. Rain, the Map 1 world record holder versus the Map 2 world record holder. Rain started off with an early lead. His movement was much cleaner than Plant's, taking less airtime with each jump and showing swiftness in his speed. However, Rain was playing it safe all tournament and going around through the Mushroom Cave. Plant, on the other hand, was going for Anvil Skip every single race. So with Rain in the lead going around Anvil Skip, it allowed Plant to hit Anvil Skip first try and catch up. 
Going into egg section, Rain was only slightly ahead. And then, this happened. This is fourth it jump. Here comes jump number five. Now here comes number six. Oh, yes, it's... Oh, oh he, no, bonked! he bonked! He bonked! He bonked! Plants up! No way, plant. Oh, my God! Plant, plant, plant one! Plant does it! Plant, plant does it! it. He clutched up! Oh. Rain with six egg jumps bonked on the corner ledge, losing himself the race in the dying moments, having to go back down once more before jumping to the finish. Plant hitting egg skip in six jumps without bonking defeated Rain by three seconds. It was arguably the most iconic moment in Pokestuck speedrunning history, and by far the greatest Pokestuck race ever. Unfortunately though, Plant went on to lose to Matana in the finals, but what the community witnessed that day will never be forgotten. And it doesn't just end there. Before the end of October, Rain was back on map two. He matched Plant's 413 and secured world record by the skin of his teeth, a 413072. A time that claimed the throne back by a mere 100 milliseconds. Plant wasn't discouraged though. With sub four a known possibility by this point, the race was on, not only for world record, but for the first sub four minute time. The support behind these two players to push for sub four was incredible, and it really was a focal point that brought the two communities together. Everyone wanted them to succeed in representing their half of the Pokestuck community and achieving the first ever sub four. In late November, it was Plant who would strike first. He achieved a 404-703, taking world record by nine seconds over Rain. But just the very next day, at the start of December in 2020, it was Rain who would have the last lap. Three fifty nine, three oh four. Not only did he get the first sub three on map one, now he had the first ever sub four on map two. Rain was the ultimate victor. The deed had been done, and their map two times would never improve from here on out. There was one last battle to be had, however. The second edition of the Pogo Jedi Open Tournament Series was announced, and just before the end of 2020, we had a map two tournament on our hands. Commentated by Bo Bandle and Jedi Jake, the prize pool for this tournament reached over $1,000. With everyone itching to see another banger between Plant and Rain, the hype was set into place. However, with the player base's rapid improvement, Plant would fall short in the corner finals once again to a familiar foe, Val Merix. The top four, however, still had some familiar names. On one side of the bracket, a heated battle between Matana and Val Merix was going to take place. And on the other side, it was Rain and a new player. His name was that guy. Rain ended up dusting that guy in the race, but for a player who wasn't even top 10 in map 2 to take out Dan Corona, who held the number 3 spot on the leaderboard, it was a pretty huge accomplishment. Rain would end up taking out Matana in the finals, solidifying his legacy in the history books. If you were a speedrunner at this time, you knew that Rain was the best player in the entire world. Pokestuck speedruns would once again slow down for the most part at the start of 2021. Rain was facing some competition on map 1 from players like Emily and Macaroni Turtle, so his efforts were focused on retaining his world record. And his rival, Plant, had disappeared from the scene, so Rain would remain on top of map 2 for quite some time. A couple of content updates were added at this time that brought players into the speedrunning scene. So let's take this time to highlight all the extra modes in Pokestuck with speedrunning leaderboards. We talked about skipless and no anvil skip mode previously, but there was also rubber band mode where you were attached to another player. Then there was invis mode which made the map invisible, and eventually ice mode which made the entirety of map 1 slippery. Then on map 2, there was double jump mode, 720 mode, and puzzle mode, which all added a new twist to the map. But there was one mode that was basically just like a new regular game mode. It was Pokestuck's map 2 upside down mode. The excitement for this mode was still minor, as it was just map 2 but flipped upside down. But it was relevant enough for Jedi Jake to return to the scene and host yet another entry into the Pogo Jedi Open series. In late May of 2021, the Pogostuck Map 2 Upside Down Game Mode Tournament was another huge event for the community. Commentated once again by Bo Bandle and Jedi Jake, the tournament had a prize pool of almost $1,200. This was set to be another amazing tournament, and this time we had another display of dominance from Rain. Based on his reputation, no one saw Rain losing, but if there was one man who could do it, it was gonna be that guy. Although that guy was battling Rain for Upside Down World Record at the time, Rain would take this tournament with ease and continue his dominance. Map 2 was released on June 26, 2020. It was now June of 2021, and Rain was still on top of almost every leaderboard in the game. The reign of Rain was a pleasure to witness. Remember when I said Super Coup announced that Map 2 would be the finale to Pogostuck? Well, on April 4th, 2021, before the Map 2 Upside Down tournament, 
Super Q did this. A third Pokestuck map, with somehow a loose lord timeline involved and multiple routes to the top? This was an unprecedented moment for the Pokestuck community, who didn't believe that a map 3 was ever coming. However, this was a very early announcement, as it was clear the map was a work in progress and wouldn't be released for quite some time. At some point towards July of 2021, Rain had lost interest in Pogostuck. His times remained set in stone, and he walked away from the game on top. During a major lull in the speedrunning community approaching the fall of 2021, one man stepped up to become the next greatest player in the history books. And of course, we're talking about none other than that guy. Previously, we had an American dominate map one, and a Japanese player dominate map two. But now it was time for a European player to carry the torch. By late 2021, that guy was starting to dominate across all categories. We know that in May of 2021, he was challenging Rain for Map 2 Upside Down World Record. But in July, we see him secure Map 2 720 World Record. In early September, we see him take the Map 2 World Record with a 357. Then in mid-November, he became the first player to secure a sub 250 in Map 1. He even took Invisible and Map 2 Double Jump World Record too. By December 2021, that guy held seven world record titles at the same time. This guy, well, I mean that guy, was here, and he meant business. On December 23rd, 2021, Super Crew released the trailer for Map 3 with a confirmed release date for January 15th, 2022. After not knowing when Map 3 would arrive for eight months, we finally had a date set. But unlike any other release before it, the speedrunning competition had incredible depth this time around. That guy, Summage, Turnup, Dan Kuroda, Cheeb, Shorty Pogo, Kaylee, Namu, Yuzume, Emily, Pav, Shadow, Sua, Izumi, Test Files, and even Rain all had their eyes on the Map 3 world record. And with multiple routes and a massive step down in difficulty from Map 2, it was about to become the most cutthroat leaderboard the game had ever seen. So let's talk about Map 3. Map 3's layout was broken up into three routes, A, B, and C. It was mostly a vertical climb, with different routes providing multiple ways to stake back and forth up the map. All three routes start off the same, but quickly split off from the beginning. Then, they reconnect at routes, and then split again going into the rings and blocks, where they connect again to the finish line. Route A mostly follows up the left side of the map up to routes, then goes back to the left side at rings and blocks. B route goes straight up the center of the map to routes, and then straight up the center of rings. C route follows up the right side of the map to routes, and then again follows the right side of rings and blocks. It was quickly discovered that C was the easiest route, followed by B and then A being the hardest. However, the fastest player was gonna be the first person to figure out how to cut through all three of these routes in the quickest way possible. Map 3's first completion was done by none other than Rain, who returned shortly for the new map. With a time of 29 minutes and 31 seconds, it was clear that the map was significantly easier than Map 2. The very same day, we see Dan Crota setting a world record of 3 minutes and 42 seconds, and the leaderboard is ruthless. This is only a few hours after release, and there are already 4 sub-4 players with rapid improvements being made. But as you can see, that guy is nowhere to be found. Pav and that guy were in a heated battle to be the first Pogostuck legend. While some achievements were obvious to acquire based on their descriptions, others took some time to figure out. There's one achievement called the Spirit of Greed, and it's to find all 100 coins that are hidden around map 3. It's a massive collectathon spread all around the map. The hardest one to find is this one, which is buried in the ground. It can only be acquired by equipping the Jackhammer cosmetic and jumping on this slope. But somehow, they figured it out. Then there was the purest achievement, where you had to beat the map without using water or rings. Now, avoiding water is pretty easy, but avoiding the rings at the top of the map is difficult. The rings are scattered all throughout the top of the map, and the only way to get around them is to go on the right side of the map on the outside of this cliff edge. The jumps on these cliff edges are incredibly precise and difficult, but somehow, they did it. Once you finish all the requirements for Pokestuck Legend, the Pokestuck Legend exam is the final test to become a Pokestuck Legend. It involves beating all three of Pokestuck's maps back to back to back in under 15 minutes. The only problem was, Pob was an extra mode specialist. He ended up having to reset three separate times before becoming a Pokestuck Legend. And in a race against that guy, one mistake is one too many. Holy fuck. Oh, God damn. Oh, my. That guy went on to first try the legend exam, and even after starting five minutes after Pav, he became the first player to ever experience what it is to become a Pogostuck legend. But the time for celebrating was cut short. That guy knew he needed to get back to learning the Map 3 speedrun. The Map 3 world record on launch day was up for grabs. It's not until the early hours of the next day that we see Pav and that guy start making strides toward the world record. Pav quickly rose to the top of the leaderboard with a 318. By 6am the next day, we see Emily take the top spot narrowly over Pav. 
but that guy was creeping up the leaderboards, now sitting in third, just six seconds off the world record. However, just 18 minutes later, it would be Pov to strike next, setting an impressive 303. By this point, the number one and two Pogo legends called it quits for the night, and it was not until 3.30 p.m. that we see another player swipe the world record. Summage has emerged ahead of Pov, scraping by with an eight millisecond lead. From all the swapping going on, you could see just how competitive the speedrunning scene has become since the game's release, with the Discord community all excited to see who grabs the top spot. At 11 p.m., Turnip grabbed the world record with three minutes flat, 12 seconds faster than that guy. But the next day, that guy was awake again, and he went to work. A two minute and 57 second time cemented himself atop the leaderboard with the first sub three minute time. But it didn't take long for that to be beat. That night at 11 p.m., Shorty Pogo topped this record by four seconds with a 2.53. But after Shorty set the two minutes and 53 second world record, a major breakthrough was discovered. And I kid you not, it's probably one of the coolest things that Super Coup has ever implemented into Pogostuck. Early on in the speedrun, once you get to the water slide rooftops, you'll notice that the frogs detach from the pillars in the background when you jump on the section for the first time. Well, if you get to the top of the slide in time, there's a floating frog that rises from the ground that you can jump on to get to the branch really quickly. Pretty cool, right? However, there's more to be found than just this single frog. It was discovered that if you use the wave emote on the water slide, a second frog will eventually spawn, just in case you missed the first one. The community was extremely intrigued by this discovery, and after messing around with it, they started to piece together how this mechanic could be useful to the speedrun, and so it was labbed out. They found out that in a perfect water slide segment, if you emote on this specific jump and take the first frog up, you can jump off this slope back to the left and perfectly land on the second frog with enough time to make it up to strawberry section. This saves having to swim through the water and go towards B or C route. But more importantly, it skips the wind segment of A route, making A route more viable. We named this skip Double Frog. Then, shortly after, this next skip was discovered. Aptly named the ship skip, you can land on the bow of the ship and wrap a flip around this rock to grab the top of the ledge. This allows you to skip the caterpillar without having to go around through ship section. These two maneuvers alone drastically changed the game. Then, at the top of the map, new routes were being discovered to ascend rings faster. By avoiding the first ring at pillars, you can jump off of these rocks to get up to the triangle platform, and then in one jump using this ring, you can get up to the left, making quick work of the section. The last major skip happens at the very last jump of the run. In this section, you ascend through these blocks which halfway become breakable, and then at the top, you drop onto this circular orb and back up into the finish ring. However, the community discovered an alternative way to speed up the finish. Instead of jumping down to the orb and back up, players began leaving one of the breakable blocks intact. Then, after jumping off of the block that triggers slow motion, they jump back to the left to the block they left intact and boost at this harsh angle straight into the finish. An insanely hype way to finish a run. With these improvements, that guy was able to surpass Shorty and take world record back with a 250, but there was still major time left to save. He pushed his time further and by January 21st, he had a 238. By January 25th, that guy had hit a very impressive run. He nailed Double Frog, second tried ship skip, and nearly flawlessly finished the run out with minimal mistakes. He had hit a 234. A familiar Japanese runner by the name Yuzume claimed the world record with a 228 sometime around the end of January of 2022. When players watched the run, they were stunned at what the speedrunner was able to pull off. Previously, in the entrance to the root section, you would either have to go up the red walls and back down to get across the gap, or in the speedrun strat, a player jumps into this corner and jumps down and then back up into roots. But Yuzume did something crazy. We named it the Yuzume skip. It skips all of routes and is just a marvel to watch. Jumping at such a crazy angle, landing in just the perfect spot to be able to jump straight up while maintaining an upside down position to avoid bonking and then rotating to reach the top of this platform. An absolutely insane find. That guy took world record back without using the skip in just a few days. On January 29th, 
that guy's new world record stood at 227.206. This record would end the crazy swapping around of the world record since release day because it lasted about a month on top. With the release of Map 3, everyone was waiting for the day a Map 3 tournament was to be announced. Sure enough, Jedi Jake announced that a Map 3 tournament would be played on February 19th, 2022, commentated by himself and Dan Corona. In the height of his prime, that guy took home the tournament win. But only a few days after the tournament, on February 22nd, Namu knocked that guy off of his pedestal and claimed the Map 3 world record with a 224. And so, that guy's time on top would end here, with his 227 being his last personal best on Map 3 to this day. With Map 3 having such a large influence and motivation for the speedrun competition, Pokestuck's time for one player dominating the leaderboard would seem to end. The next world record would be claimed by Shorty Pogo with a 2 minutes and 22 second PB on March 12th. This run showed incredibly optimized movement and extremely professional executions of all the skips and tech involved in Map 3. The only mistake was an extra jump taken in Pelican section. Regardless, it was a record that lasted around 3 months and capped off the Map 3 era with the next generation of Pokestuck speedrunners doing incredible things. With the largest number of potential top runners that the game has ever seen, Pokestuck's speedrunning community was flourishing. The world records across all game modes were being stretched so thin, how could one player dominate across all categories anymore? We were all so naive. Sua is a Japanese speedrunner that seemingly appeared out of nowhere. He completed Pogostuck Map 1 for the first time on September 27th, 2021. By October 14th, 2021, he was a Pogo master. That's a 17-day turnaround. He was seriously grinding Pogostuck non-stop. When Map 3 came out, he became the 17th ever legend. On April 20th, 2022, he hit top 10 in Map 1. And with a taste of blood now in his mouth, Sua was about to tear apart the Pogostuck leaderboards. His first world record was on April 29th, 2022, in Map 3 Puzzle. And then, on May 13th, he took Map 1 Skipless World Record. Then on May 21st, he took Map 1 Regular World Record with a 247. He finally broke his first ever regular game mode world record. But it gets more insane. On June 3rd, he took Map 2's Regular World Record with a 349. But wait, it gets even more insane! On June 6th, he ended Shorty Pogo's 3-month streak and took Map 3's regular world record with a 219. In just 17 days, Sua had torched his name in the leaderboards taking all three regular world records. Sua is an anomaly of Pogo Suck, and he's the scariest player that has ever played the game. So with the community being as strong as ever in July of 2023, it's finally time to look at where the runs are at today and see how they've progressed over this game's four years in existence. On map one, somehow the world record keeps dropping lower into the two minute range. It's crazy to think that three years ago, we all thought sub three minutes seemed impossible. Well, today it's actually a Japanese player by the name of Fufufu who holds the world record with a 236.679. Masseter has been grinding effortlessly to take back some world records from Sua on map one and even took down Sua's 238 with a world record of 237. But on June 29th, Fufufu has done the impossible. The quest for perfection that Jedi Jake was striving for in the early days of map one might have just been completed. This 236 run has no extra jumps, no unnecessary bonks, and super clean movement. It could very well be Pogostuck's first ever flawless world record. His jumps are extremely low and fast to save as much airtime as possible. Rarely does he not let go of his jump input early to save time. On top of optimized movement, this run features new skips and updated versions of older skips. The first being branch skip. It involves jumping to this wall and up to the ceiling at this slight angle and jumping outward with enough airtime to flip right with an over rotation to get the boost, then rotating back into an upwards position to gain enough height to grab the tree branch. Next, we have Anvil Skip, which has received an update. Instead of jumping up to the cave and then back left and then right, Fufufu uses three jumps on the first mushroom to gain enough height, then hits this incredibly precise blind angle to land at this specific spot to get up to cliffs in one jump using Glide. Now, let me explain what Glide is. Glide is basically a mechanic that allows a player to slide or clip along a wall. If you come into contact with a wall in less than 125 milliseconds of time after a jump, you will slide along the wall and not bonk. The last advanced tech happens in coal section. Instead of using the bonk strat, Fufufu uses what we call BBC, which stands for Bob's Bonkless Coal. Get your mind out of the gutter, people. Named after Bo Bandel, this technique has the player jump into this top corner and then jump right down into the chute, then holding straight to fall as close to this wall as possible without bonking. Once you clear the corner, the player reaches to grab as far into this ledge as possible to gain pogo position and then shoot over the vulture and through the teeth in just two jumps. Fufufu tops the run off hitting a 4 jump egg skip which is mind blowingly hard to accomplish and claims an arguably perfect run. Yahoo! 
I believe that this could be the start of Pokestuck's very own version of the human limit. This 236 time is fundamentally flawless, and I can only see it being beaten by fractions of a second with cleaner movement, or potentially if new optimizations for the run are found and implemented. Take a bow, Fufufu. What an outstanding run. Map 2's world record sees Sua achieve the world's second ever sub 340. The 336 run has some minor mistakes throughout with a few extra jumps or unintentional bonks with quick recoveries. Advanced fast strats and optimized movement are in full effect here in Pokestuck's hardest and longest speedrun. The first speed tech happens at the flower wall, where instead of going through the chestnuts on the left, the runners have discovered that wall jumping up the right side is actually faster. Then we see wind skip, where the player needs to land on the left half of this block, and then land with an egg jump after crossing the wind and jumping straight up towards bees in one jump. Then we have fast pillars entrance, which saves you the trouble of a couple up and down jumps on the right side and fires you straight into pillar section. Next, in order to skip the cogs, we see advanced rotor skip being implemented up the left wall. Then after riding the gravity orb around, this happens, which I've never seen before, so that's crazy. And to top it all off, a new route was discovered titled Fast Blocks, which sees the player strategically break some blocks to cut through the middle of the section, saving a good bit of time. While incredibly precise and optimized, there's still room for improvement on map 2. But with the challenging difficulty, verticality, and length of the speedrun, congrats to Sua on the second ever sub 340 time. Incredibly impressive work. Map 3's current world record is held by King with a 217. The run doesn't have many changes from the world record at the end of the Map 3 era. King's optimized movement and elite execution of the jumps sees a fairly flawless run emerge on top. Double Frog is still being used, which connects into Ship Skip. However, this Caterpillar to Bone to Pelican transition has been further optimized, saving a couple seconds. Then, Yuzume Skip is being used in full effect. Fast Rings leads to fast blocks, and King impressively holds an incredibly optimized Map 3 world record. Today is July 31st, 2023, and this is where the game stands today. However, more world records will inevitably be set by more players hungry to cement themselves in the history books. Frankly, I can't wait for my mind to be blown by the next up and coming runner robotically improving upon the already optimized runs. But for now, that wraps up the complete history of Pokestuck speedruns over the last four years. I love this game, it's given me so much, and I'm honored that I was able to share the legacy of this game's story with you. So thank you for watching this video. It took a lot of blood, sweat, and tears to create, so it would mean a lot to me if you subscribed. If you want to watch more Pokestuck content, check out the Pokestuck playlist on my YouTube channel. And lastly, on behalf of this amazing community, thank you to SuperKoo, the developer, for creating Pokestuck. Thanks for watching.